This thing's been pretty popular on my Instagram page and I figured we could use a couple more in our building process. This just helped us out a lot building a set of cabinets that uh, we just threw together. So we're gonna knock out a couple more real quick so we can uh, build some big cabinets we're working on and use these to assist us with clamping and assembly. As you guys seen when I purchased the half inch Baltic Burge, it, come in a, it came in a five by five sheet. You can get it in four by eight. Um, you can make it out of three quarter if you want. You can do whatever you want. I made these out of half inch because the centipedes have a center support. So it's only spanning 23 inches from support point to support point at its farthest point. And uh, they're plenty strong. Plus we're doubling up around the whole perimeter with another layer. And on the front, we're actually tripling up because that's where the track goes. By doing that, it also makes it so you don't have to clamp the cable down. You can see the table grabs the centipede. So we got another sheet. We cut it in half. That's going to make two tops. Unfortunately, if you're doing one table, you, one sheet's only going to do one because you need the second sheet for your cutoff. But we have some scraps, so we're going to be able to make two sheets or two table tops out of one five by five top. I find leaving it five feet long is perfect for a work surface. And this one here is 30 inches wide, which is half of the sheet. Um, you cut it right in half and you're trying to make two, you're gonna net one that's about 29 and seven eighths because of the saw curve. But nonetheless, close enough. Um, and let me flip it over. On the bottom, the secondary ledge is an inch and a half. And that's going around the whole perimeter. And again, one layer on the whole thing, on this front layer, it's tripled up to hold that trash. So on this table, I ran that front one around the edge here, thinking it was gonna add strength. I don't really think it did anything. So to save on material, we're just gonna do this one. Plus that one was pre-finished material. We're gonna clear this one too, just so it helps get the glue off. But uh, when we're working on it, but we decided that we're just gonna run inch and a half strips. So half inch Baltic birch ripped into strips and again Baltic birch is key guys because there's no voids in it and it's got more ply so it usually will stay straight we're gonna flush trim them when they're in place so we're gonna cut them a little long like an eighth inch long but these are the rails that are gonna get clamped and glued underneath so as you can see these rails are gonna get glued these strips are gonna get glued to either side obviously there's four of them because we're doing two tables and then you need the two side rails and then one more on the bottom on one side for three layers on one side to add that track. So I ripped these at an inch and a half. We need two rails cut at 27 inches. We're gonna flush trim it when it's all done. So we cut them a little bit big. So like 27 and a 16. I can't stress how much glue is important in a project like this because nails and screws are eventually gonna get let go on something that gets moved around so much. So I'm gonna use brads to hold it in place, or I'm sorry, pins to hold it in place when the glue dries, but throw a bunch of tight bond too. And again, I'm gonna run these a little long. They're gonna overhang just a hair and then I'll flush trim them. That way they're dead flush around the perimeter. Okay, so I shot a couple 23 gauge pins just to hold it. I'm gonna put some clamping pressure. And then go by to the next one. You can see just overhanging just a hair. Okay, the trick here on the one that's gonna get the rail. You can see they hang over, we're gonna flush trim it. But the trick is do not put any pin nails too close to the edge, because we gotta route in a groove for that track and you don't wanna kill your router bit, hit the pins. Even though they'll go through 23 gauge pins, you wanna stay closer to the back. Once the glue dries, it's not gonna move, guys. Again, guys, I can't stress how important glue is here. That shit should be oozing out. As you can see, cheap little spring clamps are perfect for this. So, Home Depot had these on sale for $1.99.
while back, so I just picked up a bunch of them, but they're great for little stuff like this. So every single time I post something that I build, I get asked what kind of track this is. I mean, every single time. And I almost post it every single video. So this will be the last time. It's three quarter by half inch thick T-track, and this one's made by Bighorn. You don't have to use this brand, but this is what I use because it's cheap. Um, at my supplier here in San Diego, I don't know where you can get it for, I pay $11.96 for three foot pieces. So that's what I use, and then I fasten it with uh, washer head half inch screws. That might not seem like it's strong, but it's incredibly strong because these holes are spaced every three inches. So you need to take that in consideration. This is gonna get routed in the front of this. So you need to take that into consideration when you're laying this out and screwing down this bottom part. So figure half inch behind this track, the screw's gonna stick out. So those are my screw locations. And I'm gonna put a screw every four inches on this front part to make sure it's plenty strong in, in adjacent, in, in uh, working with the glue itself. There you go, Russ just screwed his down real quick. And that gives you an idea of how far back we're setting these so there's no chance of screws colliding with the other screws when we uh, route in the slot and when we route in the piece. And again, we're gonna flush trim route that before we, our next step is gonna be to flush trim route that with the top. You don't have to do that, you guys can do accurate cuts and yada, 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 but we don't live in that world here so we like to flush cut everything that way it's perfect in the very end. I showed you two different ways to flush trim it. You can use a router or a track saw. If you don't have a track saw, I'm sure you have a router. Uh, router with the flush trim bit. And you end up with clean joints that are flat. So now we got a route in the slot. And we kept all our screws and nails back so we don't have to worry about hitting those when we route that in. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to slot it. I have a three quarter inch router bit. I'm gonna do two passes. Uh, and I've screwed a sled to each side of my router. That way this can ride right along this. I'm cheating by using the original table to build this table. You can see I have it set up. All you guys are gonna have to do is clamp it to your workbench, right? But I'm gonna run this slot real quick and that'll fit these tracks. My first one too, if you don't have that, the first one I actually rabbited these as I put them together. Okay, and it works, you can see. But I think it's going to be a little bit easier just to do it all in one piece. So I'm changing my method on this one. And just so you guys know, those that haven't worked with Baltic Birch, because there's so many plies, it's actually pretty difficult to cut. It, it's like routing hardwood almost. So uh, do shallow passes. Um, don't try to hog it all out at once. You can see what I'm doing here. So I'm actually going to do three passes instead of two. But it's working perfect. perfectly clean slot going all the way down now so i didn't put this is slightly under three quarters of an inch it's like plywood so i did not run a 23 30 second bit i have one but i did not run it um if you want to do that that's fine i find that uh i don't want to dole out my bit for this it's not needed I, what I do is I put a little bit of rube glue underneath this. Believe it or not, that shit sticks to everything. And when you screw it down, I promise you, you're not gonna pull this track out. And I'll show you guys that when it's done. These come, you can get them in longer lengths. My supplier carries them in three foot, uh, one foot, two foot, and three foot lengths, I think. So we cut. I cut one and I have a seam in the middle. Never gave me issues before and I use this track all the time. So let me show you.
is I put a little bit of rublu in each corner. I don't put it in the center because that's where the screw is going to hit. And one thing you'll notice with these screws is they're a little bit bigger than the slot. They'll uh, they'll pull through though. They'll put a little tiny dent. I just get a sandpaper and I, I hit that when I'm done. I still like these better than the regular traditional cabinet screws. They're a little bit wider. Like I said, they'll go in if you go at an angle, but they just pull so much better because of the deep thread pattern. So. Just my opinion, you can use whatever screw you want. These are the ones I always use with this track. Set it down, embed it in that rug loop, and you'll see here. It'll go through, but it just nicks the sides. Don't let that, it's not gonna hurt the function of the track, I promise. This is like my 20th time using this track. Okay, this process right here might be a little controversial in the fact that we're drawing the lines on. And I know people are gonna say, oh man, don't you use a jig so you can do perfect cross cuts and all that. I don't use dog holes to do cross cuts. I use them literally for clamping stuff down. So if you want to invest into like the woodpecker's jig or the parf dog system or anything of that nature to drill your holes, that's totally fine. Um, that's not what these tables are, are gonna be used for. They're literally for building stuff and being able to clamp stuff down. So I set my whole patterns at four inches. And the reason that is, is the Craig cables came, um, the uh, factory Craig cable fold up ones that I bought were set at four inches on center and they work really good for me. So I'm doing the same thing here. Um, the track guides make incredibly accurate squares. So we just draw them out with that. And I'll show you the layout pattern. Okay, pretty simple four inch uh, layout. I start off from the front where the track is six inches back. And the reason that is, is I wanna make sure we have enough room for the screw slots and everything. So six inches in. Okay, we're getting ready to drill it. I wanted to show you guys the most important tip. Get a good Forstner bit. This is a Fitch wave cutter. Uh, and they, they, you'll see right now how fast these drill. Trust me, get a cheap one and watch how miserable this process is. I'm gonna route in the screw pockets. I'm gonna show you a quick, uh, lesson on making jigs. This is one way of doing it. I make the jigs with 2P10 and half inch plywood. And then I skin the top of it with eighth inch plywood, which gives me a one eight or a five H jig. So I can use collars. Now, the reason I do it that way is you can make a really accurate jig around something by just gluing blocks together. And then by hold, to hold that together, when you glue on that eighth inch skin on top, I just use a fast cap speed tape. That makes it where it won't come apart. You don't have to worry about coming apart where you're using it. And you uh, essentially have a very accurate 5 8 feet jig. Or you can do it any way you're normally used to doing it and you can use a bearing guided bit and make it the exact same size as what you want. Either way will work. I do both ways all the time. But if you want to use collars, make your jig an eighth inch bigger to count for the collar. And there you go. You can see the screw pocket's not very deep. Not even a quarter inch, but they work quite well. So I got some double-sided fast cap speed tape on the back of this, stick it to the table and route it out. So I'm gonna set my depth. Oh, God. Holds good enough. quick and dirty hand template. What I did was, if I didn't have to take off the bushing, I made the template two inches wide. I used a hole saw and drilled, um, drew a center line, drilled two holes, and then used the table saw, lifted the blade and made myself a perfect template. But, and then switched over to a spiral upcut bit, quarter inch. So that leaves me almost a quarter inch of meat on either side after a round, so I don't have to take that bushing off. 
and these need a perfect size hand hole. Still need to round it over. But a good little grip. We'll route another one in, and I'll show you guys how it cuts. Little cuts, three of them. Yeah. I just gotta round them over and there's the template. I just put these boards out here so when I clamp it to the table, it doesn't bow it. And then by leaving it up off the table, it gives plenty of chance for the dirt or the dust to get out of there. Hitting them with an eighth inch round over real quick. Okay, I'm not gonna do a square slot on this one. Sorry, just dusting in. Uh, which is really helpful, but I don't need to do it on both tables. All I did to do this was make a template the same width as the top of the square, route it out, and then change to a smaller diameter bit. Just like here. So I started with a half inch bit, and then I dropped down to a quarter, and that left me a quarter inch of meat around the perimeter on my through pass. That way the square doesn't drop through. So if you want to do it, easy. I showed it on Instagram. If you guys want to go to my Instagram page and check out how I did it on my old Craig table. But there you go. Once it's standing, All right, we made two more. That's Russell's. He just needs to purchase the track uh, from THH when we go back over there. Here's my second one, and here's the original one. This one right here is... Uh, pre-finished this one here is raw probably just leave it raw we'll see um, this one has the square slot and the Craig drop-in I'm gonna probably do a little trick I learned from the Chicago carpenter on this one and uh, use my domino to run some slots on these to make this basically a big Craig table but we'll see um, tracks in both of them so these tracks are guys are game changers that's like the most important thing I think if you have to do any edge banding. I mean, you can see that's just one clamp. So, awesome, super lightweight. Let me show you guys what they're stacked together. Okay, so, very lightweight, guys. We weighed these, they were 20, I think 24 pounds. Super lightweight. So if you flip it upside down, you can see, even together, if you put these in a vehicle, two tables, take up less than two and a half inches. And even two tables are maneuverable. So it's less than, this is basically a little over one five by five sheet of Baltic birch. And weight wise, it's probably less than one sheet because of all the holes and stuff drilled in them. So you can see super, super lightweight. The centipedes work out real great as far as uh, being able to, I can't do it one handed, but there you go. Being able to maneuver everything super small, pop it up. That's the other thing. There you go.